Hello everyone. So, a lot of you may know I made a video a little while ago entitled Rust Has Changed. And of course a lot of you know about it because it got a lot of bloody views, didn't it? Many of you. So many of you, in fact, that Gary himself took to the Rust Reddit in order to respond to my video. So this video will be a video of me reviewing Gary's review of my video. Christ, try saying that ten points in. Anyway, enjoy. Initially, I would like to say well done and thank you to Facepunch and Gary for first off getting onto Reddit and responding to my video. That's awesome and I'm so pleased we're part of a community in which the developers really do care. Without further ado then, let's dive into Gary's first post on the Reddit. Now what I'm going to do is read through it with it on screen, so if you'd like to read through yourself, you may, but I'm going to read through it and speed up the speech a little bit just for those who are a bit too lazy to read the whole thing, which I totally understand by the way, I'm one of them. <clears throat> now enjoy my reading at a very high speed. You guys should really get together and play Legacy. It's still there and available. You should be able to tell us whether people don't KOS as much, whether people stay playing solo and build small hidden bases, or whether there was just an effect of the game being new and no one knowing what to do. I don't think making people's bases easy raidable by a single person will fix any issues, other than making it fun to play solo without a base. Anything we do to improve the lives of solo players will inevitably also benefit multiple players. That's just how it works, and how it should work. You're always stronger in a group. As far as I can see it, there's only a few things that discourage large groups of players. Some of those are natural. Large clans are a target for large clans. Group descent traitors. So we could look at adding, like, disease. Our official opinion is that grouping up is part of the game. It's obvious survival strategy. If you want to be a lone wolf, you need to deal with the disadvantages of being a lone wolf. First off, there's some really good points he mentions here, and I will get into them in due course. But first off, let's just move through piece by piece and respond. Your first point about getting together and playing Legacy. Yes, I'd love to do that, Gary, I really would, but alas, not many people are playing it right now. However, your point is a very just one, and I'm not sure if that is indeed the reason why Rust has changed to the point where it has now. Maybe it is due to the fact that people at that point weren't understanding what the game was about and how to really exploit it for all it's worth. However, I don't likely think that is the case, and I think most people who played Legacy very regularly, like I did, will be able to attest to this. People simply played that game differently, and it was around in Legacy for a long time, the game. We all played it for a long time. And um, as soon as the change to experimental rust happened, that's when I started noticing most of these problems arising. Obviously, there was that initial stupor in which everyone was like, this is so different, what on earth are we going to do? I'm not referring to that stage, I'm referring to the stage when the game was very much a proper game, it had a lot of content to it, and um, that's when I personally started noticing the problems I mentioned in the previous video becoming apparent. Part of this, I think, and this is, again, my personal opinion, has to do with the introduction of procedural maps. For those who didn't play Legacy, Legacy had one map. And the advantage to this was that um, you could learn the hell out of this map. You could learn all the nooks and crannies you would like to build your base. So when wipes happened, you'd have a good idea of where you'd like your base to be. And a lot of people, I think, liked the idea that they could properly learn a map. And it was a very well-designed map, mind you. And uh, keep returning to their place and trying different strategies if they'd like to. Whereas now on procedural, because it's so different all the time, people don't have that connection. And again, I know people are going to say, oh, but Happy's Island. Happy's Island isn't quite the same map that Legacy had. Happy's Island isn't, in my opinion, as near as good. Legacy had a huge map with only a tiny little portion of it um, uh, centered around rad towns. And so if you wanted to live on your own, you could go off into this huge open expanse where barely anyone was because it was away from the action and just be pretty much undisturbed. And because the map was so vast, or at least it seemed it, because everything was concentrated, seeing players was a little bit more of a, an unusual experience. And when you did see them, I don't know why this happened, but you didn't want to kill them as much as you do in Rust now. You just didn't. You then go on to a point about making bases easy raidable and that not being good for anyone apart from a solo player who fancies just raiding away. Now, I think you might have misunderstood my point here. I don't want bases to be easy raidable, per se, whatsoever. I think that would be an awful idea, and um, Russ has never had easy raidable bases. What I want is a base that is built poorly to be able to be exploited by a layman. If someone doesn't put window bars on their base, you know, above a certain level, you should be able to exploit that. You, you, that's stupid. You know, they, they should be punished for, for that negligence. 
And I wouldn't say that right now Rust bases are remotely even teetering on easy raidable. They're bloody impenetrable, unless you have satchel charges, and a lot of them. Um, what, what, what I want, really, and I think what a lot of people would like, is more creative ways of raiding. And I think that would really add a whole new level of diversity to the game, and a whole new level of fun that would come in looking at for little nooks and crannies, chinks in the armour that is this huge clan's base. That's where I used to get a hell of a lot of fun out of Legacy. Seeing this huge towering base, seeing, oh look, right up there, he's, he's left that window open. I wonder if that could lead me, you know, to a certain spot. And um, somehow managing to get up there. If we could have something in the game now that would allow that, that tactile level of intelligent raiding, I think everyone would love that. Not only would it help the raider, but it would also add a new level of fun for the people who are building their bases to think, about location more. You know, you could build a base in the middle of a field now and not have too many problems. Um, maybe it would encourage them to hide it away or, you know, put a, put a, a back of it against a rock face that's their little weakness or something like that. You then go on to say, um, whatever you do to benefit solar players will also benefit uh, big clans and also that the best way to survive in real life would be to group together so the game should stay that way and I totally agree with you the best way to survive is being in a big group and, and you know strength in numbers that is absolutely fine we're on the same page there however in this game right now big groups are so 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 high above solo players um, that it, it's it's very much unfair it's unbalanced and part of this does definitely have to do with the fact that it's really hard to raid a big clan. If, if you don't have the right, you know, levels of C4, you have to be a clan to beat a clan at the moment. And um, there should be more creative ways of taking them down. Then you make a brilliant suggestion. You say, why don't we add disease, something like that? Because what we need in this game is a disadvantage to be in a clan. That's the only way we can really do this. We've got to have a negative thing that could affect clans. And disease would be a, a definite interesting way of getting around this issue. I wrote up a few other suggestions of my own. You know, these are just absolutely ballpark suggestions, but another one could be maybe have a limit on how many people can be authorized on one building cupboard. This would discourage those really monstrous clan sizes. Maybe even give server admins the ability to decide how many people can be authorized on a building cupboard. If a server admin, for example, wants a server in which it's mainly going to be 1v1s, 2v2s, he could set a, uh, you know, a three-person limit on building cupboards. I know there's obviously ways to exploit this idea at the moment, but um, it's just a suggestion, and there might be a way to, to make it work. If you want to be a lone wolf, you have to deal with the disadvantages of being a lone wolf. Yeah, I agree, there should be some disadvantages, which there very much are, but at the moment there's far too many disadvantages, and a lot of people are agreeing on that. Gary made one other Reddit post, which I deem is of real significance, and so I'll quickly run through this one to end off this video. You are hitting on the main gameplay issue here. It's not so much an issue of solos versus groups, it's an issue of the established versus new spawn. This is made worse by the fact that in the current system, groups can establish way faster, to a point where they have AKs and armor and everyone else has nothing. The XP system goes away to solve that, to moderate the pace of the game so everyone is on the same level for a set period of time. Groups can still benefit from this system by unlocking different blueprints and crafting for each other. The problem of spawning fresh on an established server will still exist, but it's our hope to move away from building stuff with a huge process refining collected resources, which obviously benefits hugely from having a group of people collecting resources. We want to move towards building stuff with specific components, which can only be found by looting. Nothing we do will make a solo player stronger than a 10-man gang, that's just the way it works, but we can definitely try to make things easier. You said that the XP system goes away to make sure that everyone on a server is exactly the same for a set period of time, and this is true to an extent. However, the problem with this that was very duly noted, and I know this video is a tad belated, so some of these problems have already been fixed, but um, as of the time of this post, groups were incredibly, incredibly advantaged over the solo players in the XP system because of the item sharing, blueprint, um, speciality kind of thing. And I don't think that it did anything to really help solos, but it is definitely a step in the right direction. The, um, the point I really found interesting in this post uh, is something that um, can be seen on the recent podcast episode I did with Shadowfrax. Link to that is in the description. He says, 
that they are currently working on towards building stuff with specific components which can only be found by looting. Now this is a fantastic idea that would really solve a lot of these problems, making guns rarer, harder to find, and so clans have a little bit more attachment to them, they're not so gun-ho about leaving their base with a load of guns and a load of ammo. Guns are rarer, harder to find, bullets are rarer and harder to find. Really just making late game really late game, getting to that stage is a challenge and when you're actually there, you're not so careless with your things, you don't want to go out and just hunt down freshborns for the fun of hunting down freshborns because at the end of the day, one of them might be able to get you, in which case you'd lose your guns and that's a huge blow to your system. And I mean also, the biggest issue for me with the XP system when it was brought in is it removed the ability for luck in Rust. R luck really just disappeared out of the window and um, the advantages for a, for a new spawn as to, you know, the advantages compared to a clan, as you stated very well and very often, is ludicrously different. And um, I think the component method in which you did um, discuss in that last Reddit post would be a fantastic solution to this and a really good step in the positive direction for Rust. You end on saying that you're, uh, you're definitely trying to make things easier, and that's exactly what we want to hear. You're trying to make things easier, you're trying to balance the game, you're responding to our comments and our suggestions and watching these videos that people spend time to make, and that is just a sign of fantastic development, so I, I, I take my hat off to you there, good sirs. That is wonderful. Well, that video went on a little bit longer than I intended it to, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed some of the points I made and found it interesting that we actually got a proper response here from the developer. Um, I just thought that was absolutely fabulous and a really good idea to respond to in video format. I'm also a tad sorry if you notice a bit of a voice change about halfway through the video. It was recorded over about four days, and within those four days I became rather ill. So um, that, that explains why I've, I've become a little bit more monotone. Um, but regardless, thank you for watching this. I hope to keep providing this kind of content in which the developers might find interesting or find um, worthy of responding to. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, all of us, all of you watching this video right now, myself and all the other YouTubers in this community, we're all shaping this game, and we want to make it the right shape. We want to make it the perfect possible shape. Um, so thank you again for watching this video, you beautiful bastards. Stay coy.